I'm 10 years old and I go to karate with my wee brother. I'm in mine, 6 years old. I do karate with my mum and my sister. With my sister and my cousin. I go to karate with my mum and my dad and my uncle. We go as a family, the three of us go um, together with my two daughters and my nephew. With my two daughters, Jenna and Emma, and Jenna's friend, Rebecca. My dad has now started as well. Well, I get started the same way that a lot of adults get started. They take their kids there. I wanted to start, so my mum went online and found some clubs near us. One of my friends, Robin, she was already a black belt and she wanted someone else to go. I just found a leaflet in school and I thought that looks fun and enjoyable. I'll just go and see what that's like and try that out. And I used to take them there. And because I work away from home all the time, I was a bit reluctant and a bit... Uh, you know, it wasn't really going to actually get started with it. But Trida actually eventually says she was fed up listening to the amount of times that I said that I don't have time, that I can't do it, that I'll work away too often. So she just says, no, that's it, I'm not listening to that anymore. So get up get, and get your socks and shoes off and get up and do, do something. <laughs> My mother um, did jiu-jitsu when she lived in America in the 1950s. She was a bit of a power tricky kind of thing, independent woman. And um, she came home to Scotland to do another degree, met my father, they got married, and it turned out he wasn't the nicest of guys. Um, he did an awful lot of hitting and he almost killed her, and the only thing that saved her life when she was pregnant with me 
was our jiu-jitsu moves to get her, get, get them off. So that was probably the start, probably the inspiration to do martial arts. I started karate pretty much as soon as I could walk. When I was 13, I was getting picked on quite a lot at school. Um, and it was my dad that originally encouraged me because my mum and dad had both done it before. I needed a club or an activity that Ewan could do when he was two and a half. And um, I couldn't really find anything that would take them that young, but Chida took them that young at karate. A few of the mums started up with us at the same time. Um, gave up after two weeks, right enough, um, and Trida persuaded us to come back, so. Natasha, my oldest daughter, she started karate, and I used to take her. Sat for three hours every Tuesday, sat for an hour on a Wednesday. Um, Trida tried and tried for three years to get me to join in one of the winter schools that we were at. In the Sunday they do a civilian thing, so it's like black belts pick someone on the sideline to go and do something. And Eric chose me, so he had to teach me the first kata. And we went back out, done it in front of everyone, all the cheers, and she threw a red belt. And that's how I started. Taking them to training, got handed a suit and a red belt, and that's basically how it started. <laughs> <laughs> I was handed stuff and said, go. She didn't have to encourage me to get up, I was quite happy to get up. <laughs> I, mean, I, however, resisted it. Mm, I thought, completely. I've got no memory and no sense of, <laughs> sense of rhythm, so I'm never going to manage these katas. And, I, and so I just resisted it as much as um, Trida and others tried to talk me into it. But then when these guys, I went along to summer camp 2008, and they were all up there, outdoors at the campsite, doing this kata, all different suits, all different belts, and I thought, that looks really good. I'd like to be a part of that. One day we were at the, uh, the Glen Boy Gala Day, and I saw all these teenage girls who were just, could totally handle themselves and I thought, I want my daughter to be able to do that. I want to know when she's t a teenager and she goes out clubbing when she's a bit older, I know that she can handle herself should something happen. So I came along and I dropped Poppy off and I was kind of going to drop her off and go and got told, no, 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 I'll get your socks and shoes off. Socks and shoes off, get in. So I joined in. And I took part and I hadn't done karate in about 17, 18 years. So we were doing the self-defense class and about halfway through it, Trida had me pinned to the floor with her arm to my throat and her knee in my groin. And I, and I was just lying and I thought, you know what, I could learn a lot from this woman. And, and my daughter can learn a lot from this woman. with my amazing family, my gorgeous daughter, my handsome son, my husband is 100% behind us, and my karate family who are so important to me, it's unbelievable. They're all like my brothers and sisters and they're all like my kids and the karate aunties. <laughs> yeah. What can you say about Trida? <laughs> Trida. Um, she's blonde. She's loud. She's scary sometimes. She's off her head. <laughs> she's loud. She's bold. She. The man's discipline and gets it. Trida is the ultimate sensei. She is the boss. There's no doubt about that. Trida's the boss. She does the sensei with the big blonde hair and the big heels. Uh, first time I went to Karate, um, we turned up and Trita was there with her blonde hair and talking about shoes and she was pregnant at the time I think as well and um, yeah it was just, it was really scary, she swore a lot, um, shouted a lot, called me a lot of names, told me I got to the back of the class, that sort of thing but um, and I came out thinking I'm not going back, told my dad I wasn't going back, he refused to go back but um, 
he told me just just go try another time and I think it was good for me. A lot of people don't like that kind of aggressive way that she comes about, but for me it really helped. It brought out my confidence and stopped me being so shy and getting picked on a lot. She's helped me become more confident and she's helped me learn how to defend myself. So like if I get attacked or something, I can know how to defend myself and how to be safe. Our back's with worse than our bite sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but... You know, inside that it's all for your own good, so. Get your hands behind you! Turn! Turn! <laughs> See, when you first come into the class, she's not that soft because she tries to toughen you up so that if someone comes to try and grab you or something, you don't just act all soft, you have to, like, Defend yourself and do it really hard so she's toughening you up by shouting sometimes. What happens to the head when you kick underneath the chin? <laughs> Goes back, so there is absolutely no point in doing that unless you intend like, to post cab to them. So, straight in. You ready? Go! Come on! Use your hands, Johnny! She's very good at what she does and how she teaches it, um, and she teaches everybody different to however, because we all learn different, so she's very good at doing that as well. She does scary at times when she needs to be, but she's nice out of karate most of the time, and she always tries to encourage people. Got the biggest heart. Absolutely amazing heart. She'd do anything. Karate Trida, that's a persona she puts on. She's really good, not only as a, a karate instructor, no, she's, a, she's became a good friend as well, and she's there for you no matter what. No, she has been there for me quite a lot in the past. There's two types of treaters. Um, there's the treat in the dojo. She's a very strong, powerful, persuasive woman. Um, and there's Trida outside the dojo. She's very nice, she's very friendly. She would do anything for you. She's my friend, and she is there if you need her. She'd give you the last penny she had if you needed it. She's like another mother, like, she'll help you out with anything, any problems. Um, you know, she's always there for you. If something happens at school, she'll help you out if it's hurting your feelings or something. Trida is one of the most inspirational women I've met. She's nuts, bonkers, off her rocker, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What's Trida going to do to us if we're late one day? Top how the eggs off. <laughs> Top the eggs off. Um, but she also has the biggest heart of anyone I've ever met. Like, sometimes she does get a wee bit bonkers, but it's quite, it's not bad, it's kind of funny. And like, she's not one of the people that'll just shout at you for no reason. She'll hear a laugh and everything. And that's kind of, like, it. Like, just brilliant teacher at karate. She's taught me a lot. The knowledge that, you know, the has passed on, just the wee sort of bits, you know, tweaking here and there. Yeah, she's just allowed it telling you, but the message gets through. She's just Trita. She's, she's an inspiration. Eh? Hey, what do you think of Trita? Good. Good. <laughs> just good. I'm sure many people have said many things, but she is amazing. She's got a heart of gold. Um, she still scares me, um, as well as everyone else, um, when she needs to. Um, but she's a phenomenal. She's a one-off. But she is scary, and she does scare everybody. <laughs> Wake up! Six! My mum is... She's lovely, really. At karate, she can shout, scream sometimes, but Let's she just... Go. She cares about everyone, everyone in it. Um, she... She is lovely, but sometimes she can be really, really scary. I teach karate, I think, to make people realise how awesome that they can be for them. And it's you, you can't pay for the feeling that you get whenever somebody sees how awesome they, they are for themselves. You know, you can't, you can't imagine. It's like giving somebody a gift.
it changes their life. And that's that's probably the most the most amazing thing is to be able to help somebody see how they can change their life and be fabulous. And it's okay to be fabulous, you know? Because I think sometimes um, in this day and age, oh, you can't be anything special, or you've got to be, oh, and everybody's the same, and every kid's a winner and all this kind of stuff. Everybody's got to be the same. But no, you, it's okay to be work hard to get what you want to to do what you want to do to be the best to the best that you can be you know that's that's it Togo Black Bell Academy is a crossy school and North Lanarkshire and it is Order! I teach only three clubs now um, I teach a Monday night Tigers, um, a Tuesday night Sugawai, and a Wednesday night Cobra. We've got different instructors in the clubs that I've brought through the ranks that I'm so, 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 so proud of. Monday night, we have Kirsten. <laughs> and Kirsten is a mammy <laughs> who started because we said, take your shoes and socks off uh, with her two girls. And she was amazing, and she came through the belts fantastically. I and she got her her black belt all at the same time as her daughter. Um, we've got a great wee class. Um, we've got loads of different religions, races, ages. Uh, we've got a big girl in the class. She's like really, really shy, and every single week you see her coming on. Every week, you know, she comes on so much more. Um, we've got a wee boy. He's only about four or five, um, and he just. He does his cat as well, so much determination. It's just, it's great seeing them all coming on every week um, and knowing that it's myself that's teaching them. You know, when they come out of this, they're going to be able to be a black belt. Um, they're going to be able to do so much more. It's just, it's, it's a great feeling. It's nice. Good girl. Wednesday, we have two classes running at night and that's um, with Ryan, with Car, with Jemima. <laughs> Ryan is fantastic. He's we've seen I've seen him grown from from a wee boy <laughs> into a fantastic young man, a fantastic confident young man that wants to pass on right. what he's learned and mould as well. So oh, he's God, he's great and he deals with comfortable enough and he deals with all the weapons now. So that's taken a wee bit more off him as well. The ethos of Total Battle Academy is always with honour and respect, pass on your knowledge, and I feel like that's probably the best way to do it is to teach. Um, so when Trida approached me and basically said, you're taking a club, um, I was like, well, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to learn from other, like the kids and a good opportunity to pass on my knowledge, so that's what I did. Wednesday nights in Glenboig, and that's a that's a good class too. Uh, Paula is one of the black belts that's, that's there, and... <laughs> For three years she sat in the sidelines watching her kids. And for three years I kept saying, take your shoes and socks off, take your shoes and socks off, take your shoes and socks off. <laughs> and eventually she took her shoes and socks off and she's never looked back and she's awesome. She's fantastic as well. Her and her two girls doing karate together, fantastic. Yeah, it's good, um, especially when you're teaching the younger ones and you see their wee faces when they're getting a new belt. Um, they're just delighted. It's like giving them a million pounds. And then they're so excited to go on to the next kata as well. And it's just, it's really good. It makes you feel good inside. Thursday night, um, Frenchie. <laughs> Frenchie got her black belt. Uh, and her two girls have got their black belt and now she's teaching her dad. Too. That's her club in uh, a Thursday in Aird. My dad had started with my class. Uh, he was my first student. So I can see the interest that he's taking in it. It's, it started because it was told to start by me. He need to help me out. But he's becoming really, really into it. Uh, practicing all the time. Practicing in the house with the kids. So that's good. I can see the kids growing in confidence and any kind of behavioural problems that comes through the door, 
you can see them being ironed out slowly, but you can see them. Some days are better than others, but you can see an improvement. Um, the, the confidence in the kids to get up, stand on their own and do it and see them learning it and remembering it and then seeing the joy in their face when they get a belt, get a new belt, it's, it's really good that way. Tracy has her own club on a Friday night as well. <laughs> Tracy started after her kids got their black belt and after her husband got, her, her partner got her, his black belt and she thought, I can do this as well. So she did and she got her black belt and she got her own club and she's going for another dan. And by winter school, hopefully, she'll be the highest dan in her house, although she was the last person to get it. So that's quite funky. I, and she's very special. She's a great inspiration to the girls. And Sauce is in Bells Hill with his wife and son that are black belts. Hey. Well, the Dragons was our original club because it was Bells Hill. Um, so that's where we joined. And what I love about teaching is just, you always want to give back. Don't you? You want to, you know, you've learned, and now you want to pass that on. Um, and I know that that's you know part of the Torah motto is um, passing on your knowledge. Um, I just enjoy interacting with people. We do it in other things outside of karate, and I just love interacting with all the ages and stages, mums, dads, kids, the whole, the whole lot. Then on a Saturday morning, we've got Tom. <laughs> well, there's the old adage that those who can do and those who can't teach. Well, I'm never going to be world-class at karate, but I'm quite good at passing on the kind of things that I know. Um, I think, anyway. And I quite like that. I quite like to start people off and bring them on and give them a bit of advice. And there's always different ways of teaching as well, isn't there, Rachel? You know, if one thing doesn't work, you try something else. It's a bit of an extension of anything you do professionally. You know, there's always different ways of doing it. So I quite like that. Um, and we've got a real mixed bag, haven't we? We've got a real variety. We've got the... Attached to my club, we've got our oldest member, Tommy Douglas, who is, now correct me if I'm wrong, Rachel, he's 70 years and one day older than you, isn't he? Mm -hmm. My name's Tommy Douglas. I got started when I was 70 odd. I got my black belt when I was 77. Sunday, we have a family affair in Glenboig again. We have Erica. <laughs> She has her two sons training. Her partner trains, he's a black belt too. And Yvonne is also Erica's uh, sister. And she started training. Now her two kids have started training. I love seeing people progress, especially the, the wee ones like Poppy and Connie. I like seeing them start from not knowing anything to being a wee bit, you know, get, taking their first kind of steps as it were, and then progressing. Um, I also quite enjoy seeing the change in people when they first start and they're quite unconfident and they're kind of unsure of everything and very self-conscious to when they become brown belts and then eventually black belts and they kind of come into themselves and really open up and be very confident and almost become different people. I think that's very rewarding. And her father, Eric, he is also a black belt with us. <laughs> I like to see adults getting out of the comfort zone, a bit panicky, and being able to play, because the adults don't get allowed to play for an hour a day or an hour a night. It's, it's great just to see the adults playing. Eric is a character. Eric is fabulous. You find that the, the men that train with us are men, manly men and comfortable with their manhood enough to be able to train and learn from women or from kids. And that's that's how you know it's a real man because they're comfortable learning from women and kids. So yeah, it's about what belt you are. It's about, that's the respect to the belt. It's not about what how tall you are or what sex you are. It's about the belt that you are. Winter school is the big one. That's where everybody goes and trains really hard all year round to go for their black belt. Go away for a weekend, um, make up a big kata, teach it to someone. It's a big, massive 
thing that happens, a big massive event, and usually there's like 100, 200 people watching you. That was very scary that day. <laughs> very scary indeed. You just had to practice all day, because, you know, like in the end you're going to get your black belt, and that's just a massive thing to me. It is really nerve-wracking, but it's exciting as well, and it's really rewarding at the end of it when you get that black belt and you get your certificate to say you've done it. That's one of the hardest bits at karate is winter school, because it's a full weekend of non-stop karate, and it makes you feel better that you've done it all, because you've pushed yourself to the limits. <coughs> yes, you are now ready to receive your black belt and begin your work. Mentors light their candle for them and give them their candle and then put their belt on for them. Well done, guys. Yeah, it's a big reward, getting your black belt and all your hard work. You, uh, all your hard work and everything that you put into it and everybody gets to see how much you put into it all year round because you're training with everybody all, all year round. And at the end of it, you know, you've got to get up there and show them. It's just a really amazing feeling of it. It was a really good day for me because I've worked so hard for it and finally got it. So it was a really good day. You made your old dad cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ewan's really come on in the time that we've been doing it together and he's so close to doing his black belt and I'll not be able to contain myself when he gets there, but he's taking his time, so. <laughs> but when he does, it'll be the proudest, proudest moment, I think. Mm. Blow out your candle, but don't ever blow out your hope and your dreams, right? Mm. Just the candle. <laughs> this is Ernst. Right, Elizabeth, I had said a wee while ago that the three of you were going to go for Daiho, right? And in that wee while, in that last couple of months, you have, you've, you've done amazingly well. You've, you've, your time is perfect. You've come into yourself. You've grown into your bra. <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do, your Daiho, right? But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you till tomorrow morning after breakfast to get yourself a black belt, a new black belt, somebody who just got their black belt today, make up a cat to teach them that and I'll see how you go and we might even make you lose your hole tomorrow morning. <laughs> Maybe. But I won't have a certificate for you until you go home. Is that okay? Have a seat, guys. <laughs>
The way I've noticed Trita, like, whenever she's in winter school, whenever you see her, like, you get, <clears throat> she's got a tear in her eye whenever she sees, like, people, she remembers them from white bells and then she sees them as black bells. <clears throat> like, when I'm older, I'm wanting to take my own class and then kind of have that feeling. Too much fun, guys. I'm thinking, wow, it must be, like, she must be feeling really, really pr proud of herself because, like, she's made someone who doesn't know anything about karate to knowing that they're safe wherever they are. Before we came to winter school, we counted how many black belts Torah Black Belt Academy has made. Tora Black Belt Academy has 99 black belts. And then we had our 100th today. Julie was the first one added up. Julie was the 100th. And then so we now have 115 black belts. You're part of a great big thing, guys. A great big thing. We've had daughters and mothers getting their black belts at the same time. We've had fathers and sons. And we also had a grandmother and a grandson get their black belt on the same day as well. Um, I got my black belt whenever I was seven, which made me the youngest black belt in Europe. However, it wasn't my mum that graded me my black belt, as she thought it kind that it wouldn't be fair. That So she, she took me up to somewhere in England, I don't remember, I was seven. She took me up to somewhere in England and two Japanese guys graded me. And I didn't even know that I was a black belt until we went to a normal Tuesday night karate. And my mum was just like, oh, by the way, Zara, you're a black belt. And I was like, what? No way, I was so happy. Because usually you have to go away and it's a big, massive, massive thing. But I was so young and they didn't want to make it out to, like, as if it was favourite favouritism. So my mum was just like, oh, here's a black belt. And I was like, oh my God, I was so happy. It was amazing. <laughs> and being the youngest black belt in Europe was brilliant. At winter school on the Saturday night, um, there's always a different themed party that goes on. <laughs> this year I think it's James Bond. And there's been like Michael Bublé and Abba and um, tons of stuff like that. Last year it was an 80s theme. So my mum dressed up as Madonna and I dressed up as Chucky and Natasha. Is it someone out of fame or something? Um, that in our room. Flash dance. Flash dance. Flash dance even. And it's really, really fun because there's always something different. It's not always the same every year. You get to train intensively for two days, so that brings your karate on. And you get to socialise with everybody from all the other clubs. You get to meet loads of new friends. And at the end you get to party at night with the kids. And it's very family orientated, you know, so it's brilliant. It's a complete family affair. Well, we do displays. We do open days and we, um, we don't charge to open, you know, nurseries or to do displays and stuff like that. We don't charge people. We've opened schools, we've opened um, any, any kind of events like that. We've done stuff uh, for Chinese New Year. We've also done work that doesn't really have anything to do with karate, to do with the kicking and punching. We, at uh, Christmas time, we always get presents and we give them to women's aid kids or Last year we all got presents and we brought them to Erskine for the soldiers. Um, we did bag bagpacking for the autistic kids for their, the Red Hen Club, which is a club in Glasgow that's trying to support kids that have got autism and their families and give them a wee bit more uh, help with speech therapy and play therapy and stuff like that. So we did bag bagpacking and we made enough money for the club to to fund the club to run for a year. 
we do steward and we've done stewarding for um, the Monklands Run. We've done charity car washes with you know the, the lovely girl over 16 year old black belt girls and they were washing cars and stuff like that. We also run self-defense classes every now and again just for anybody in the community that wants to come along. Any women that, that don't feel that they're safe enough they can come along. Oh, there's, there's loads of things that we do with the community but we're a big 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 family and we've got loads of people in the Karate, the Torah family They've got businesses and we try and help each other out that way, you know. Um, yeah, it's not all about kicking and punching. <laughs> um, you're really nervous to start off with and there's a lot of work that goes into it. So, Trida, she always tries to scare you a bit to try and get you to be better before it. And there's a lot of things you need to try and remember and timing and just, just what, like, kind of what you need to do. and. You're always nervous before you go on, but you feel really good after you finish the display. And sometimes you are looking forward to the next one or you're dreading it, and you're always feeling the same after it. Doing a display in the rain kind of motivates you a bit to try and, not just because you're, you're wanting to do the display, it's you kind of want to get, get finished and get out of the rain, most more than anything. But it kind of, when you, once you're wet, you're, like, once you're soaked, soaked with the rain, you don't really mind anymore, so you just go on with the display and it's fun after that. The kids work very hard. They're pushed to their absolute maximum. And kids, they respond. They respond to hard work. They respond well to something to do and giving them a challenge. And because most of the time nowadays, they're sitting in front of their, their iPads and stuff like that. And there isn't the same eye-to-eye -eye contact, face-to-face -face conversations that we used to have with our friends when we'd go out and play and things like that. So karate doesn't just work well with the kicking and the punching and the concentration, it's also really good for the social skills. And as soon as they can, as soon as a kid has learned something, it's then told to teach another kid that doesn't know that. So then it's having to communicate we have to have to communicate, they have to teach. Well, the fact that it challenges you and you get to teach other people what you already know and it teaches you a lot of respect and discipline. It's really helping me because I'm learning how to teach more and how to teach better. I love the way whenever you've been teaching someone how they get really, really happy and they want to go back then that also builds their confidence as well because they've taught someone how to do that so I can now do that properly and I'm going to pass that on and how do we pass that on? They show them, they tell them and they work with them but they do work really hard especially the black belts and the displays and stuff like that they are amazing, they're my girls and my boys, they're my weans but don't tell them that I like them <laughs> don't tell them <laughs> Uh, well, karate is, is, you need to bend your knees. You do need to bend your knees. The way that we teach the kids and the way that we try and bring the kids on um, isn't to teach them to be violent. We are a karate club, we're a martial arts club, that's fundamentally what we do. But it's not, in, it's not our intention to make violent kids. What we intend to try and do is to try and inspire a bit of confidence. Give the kids a bit of confidence. Um, not only in their own abilities, but also in their bearing as well. Uh, in these day and ages, bullying is a problem. It can be a big problem, especially at school and things like that. And we don't want to teach people to be bullies. What we want to do is give them the confidence that they're not the easy target. 
And that's really what I like about this as well. It's not that we teach violence to kids. What we teach as kids is a bit of respect for each other and a bit of confidence. And hopefully that way, through that, they'll avoid the bullying problem. Most karate clubs these days are very sport oriented. It's a competition, it's you have to do better than everyone else. You have to get to the best that they expect of you. Whereas in this club, it's you get to the best that you can be. It's more about the, the art, the style of it. Um, and I think for me, that's pretty unique. Sometimes what uh, Finn, one of the other uh, black belts, he's a police officer and we do occasionally self-defence classes and they're really good, especially for um, the, the girls, just to be aware of their uh, surroundings, know that when they're outside, knowing where to walk on the pavement, things like that. It disciplines me to actually do some exercise. Um, I love it for the fact that I know that if anyone comes near me, in the street, or also if anybody went near Lauren, um, that both of us would know how to defend ourselves. I know so many people that have been attacked and they've come off worse because they can't do anything about it, but I know I could. <laughs> it's been really good seeing their confidence grow and it's safe. I'm safe in the knowledge that when they, when they grow up, it's... I don't need to worry as much if anything does happen when they're out and about in the streets when they're older. I know they'll be safe because they can handle themselves very well. So. From a personal level, karate challenges you in ways that it's very easy as an adult to see keep your little comfort zone, but to challenge yourself both um, for your confidence and just learning new katas and being uncomfortable in a position that Trida shouts at you can be quite, it's good for you to put yourself in that position. So physically, keep yourself going and yep, out with your comfort zone is not a bad thing as an adult. To say that I like it because it's specifically karate might not be correct. I like it because I like the exercise part of it, I like the fitness part of it. I like the, not excessive, but uh, a reasonable level of discipline that it requires as well. And I think that's good for the kids. Well, it's, it kind of keeps you fit and stops you from lying in your bed sleeping eating crisps. I'm not getting any younger and it does, <laughs> it keeps me to a degree fit. I go along sometimes feeling pretty grim and it's like I think it's going to either cure me or kill me. But I always walk away at the end of the night feeling better for it. It keeps me sort of fit because I'm just getting to that age where another two or three years it might not be there. So that's why I do that. For me, karate basically snuck up on me. You know, uh, I didn't have any intentions, it was nothing that was in my mind and America got me to start doing it, I just kind of, you know, I just get hooked on it. It's just like a good good way to not think about anything else, you know. I use it to relax more than anything else because you don't need to think about anything else that's happening in your life, you just concentrate on that and nothing else. I just like karate basically because I can get out of the house, do what I want to do and it's a release for work, a mental release for work sometimes. I don't know, I just enjoy it. Like it's something to do and keep you out of trouble and stuff. And like if you've got any spare time that's where I go. So like if I've not got homework one of those nights, I'll go to extra classes. When the girls go into class, I immediately stop being mum and I become Frenchy. Um <laughs> they come to me for advice on how to teach or if they're doing something and they forget, as you do if you're concentrating on a certain kata and you all of a sudden swap, they'll come to me for advice for that. But it's not the, Mum, how do I do? It is on level with me as they are, because they're black belts in their own right. So they become more, not my daughters in a family sense, but my friends in a family sense because of Torah and it's, it's a different relationship I have with the girls which I feel makes it better for us even out with if I'm angry at them in the house because they've not tidied their room when we go in to Torah. They're different people, they're different girls so all that's forgotten and it's it's time for us together so it's it's been really good. I wanted to lose weight, I wanted to be fit, but it's not obviously helped because I'm still this weight, but I'm more fitter and I like the challenge 
and my family and my colleagues all say I've come out. Myself, I can now stand up and do presentations because that this is that the karate has helped me and you have to do it in front of each other. You need to stand up and you need to come out yourself. If I can stand up and do karate for Trida, I can actually do anything that anybody challenges me now in, in life. First and foremost, Trida is my wife and I love her with all my heart and karate is not something I've been interested in but being part of Trida's life, uh, I've become more and more involved in it. Uh, I love taking the photographs and getting them published, videos and I love to go along to all the open days and support them as much as I possibly can. Obviously with CJ and Zara being involved in it. Uh, makes it a wee bit more special being a dad and uh, it's just a great part of my life that I love to be involved in even though I don't actually participate in it I still feel heavily involved um, and it's just absolutely fantastic I have <sighs> very 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 fortunate to have so many amazing people in the club and some of the nicknames are quite funny the guys that go here, I'm the only man that's never had a girl's name. So if you're watching Cheetah, hard luck. <laughs> Everybody gets silly, silly nicknames. But they're all family and we don't just we don't just kick and punch together. We don't it's, it, that's only the smallest amount of it. It's amazing how you can do that, you can you just become a family. But even if there's not a, a spot of blood between them, they're all they're all family. Um <laughs> We do have an awful lot of characters. There's many, there's many a story. I love how um, how many friends you can make in karate, how we're all there for each other and how you can go to pretty much anyone. Ryan, he's pretty much like my big brother and I've, I've made so many friends ever since I started. It's been an amazing experience. Sometimes I used to go every single night Monday to Sunday and it, it was too much and sometimes I did, I, I wanted to quit but then I was just like I could never ever leave, this is such a big part of my life and I love it and it's amazing, it's an amazing feeling. Karate is, was my thing that I did for myself. Yeah, I took you and out and we went out and spent time together on a Tuesday night but it was my hour for myself that I did that was for nobody else. Not for work, not for Wayne's, not for the house, but nobody else. But now karate is all about family for me. Um, and at times about support as well. Um, and it's as much now a part of my life as my day job and my family. And then there's all the other people that I would now count as my karate family as well. Yeah, I really enjoy karate. Um, it gets you out. It gets you. I've met a lot of good friends through karate. We do have a good social life in karate as well. No, there's quite a few nights out. <laughs> she sees a red close up, Mr. Tavell. It's the whole karate family thing for us. It's something we can do together. And you know, Matthew was six when he started. He's now 13. And become teenagers, it's hard to do things with them. So this keeps us together as a family. Just, I love the family feeling you get at Tora. Um, it's not a karate school, it's a karate family. When you're in the karate family, you're completely embraced in that cocoon. You make loads of friends and it kind of brings everybody together. I just... I just love Tora. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about it. Everybody, everybody gets to be the best that they can be. 
not everybody. I don't. I don't want clones. I don't want loads and loads of clones of Trida. That's because not everybody's the same height as me. Not everybody's the same build as me. Thankfully, <laughs> we have boys. We have men. We have skinny ladies. We have ladies that aren't so skinny. Everybody can be the best that they can be. We're not looking. There's Jackie Chan. Nobody. We don't want Jackie Chan's. A whole bunch of Jackie Chan's. Jackie Chan isn't even Jackie Chan. Have you seen the end of the movies? There's always how it went wrong. So be the best that you can be. And be fabulous. Be be part of it. And everybody can do this. If you've got a mind, you can do this because it's got not enough luck to do with the body. It's your mind and how much you can push yourself to your maximum to be your best. You know, that's that's it. I think that's it. <laughs>
Right, come on, left leg now. One. <laughs> okay, tell you what, if we get the adults out, we'll do the kids first. <coughs> Good luck, kids. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One. Dear Zara, every time your fancy start kicking, that would be smashing. Go! Let me hear you. And then. And then I just watched Terry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's reason to do what I mean. We won't be long, I promise. I've got one more question to ask them. Who wants to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've got two more. Or Charlie. Ball Bell Techie! You had your red bull. Go for it. I'll be glad to get him if it intervenes. And yeah, you would. So I'll tell you what, I'll get out of the way. I'll just make sure you miss Alan. Okay, I've never actually thrown it before in real because it's always done the dojo, but. Alan, you're, you're happy to stay this side for yeah, the Yeah, absolutely, door. yeah. I'll see you turn anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about Cheetah? Ruff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we keep that in? Is that going in the blue paper? <laughs> and it was near your lips moving it. <laughs> <laughs> we can change that in the edit. <laughs> oh, we can make you say anything in the edit. Can we go on